<clears throat> Senate Committee on Finance, fellow colleagues in government, ladies and gentlemen, we have the honor to present the fiscal year 2015 budget proposal of the Office of the Vice President. The Office of the Vice President is mandated to provide necessary administrative and technical support to the Vice President in the exercise of his executive, ceremonial, advisory, administrat administrative, and constituency functions. The OVP is uh, proposing a 222,632,000 budget for fiscal year 2015 broken down <coughs> into the following <coughs> personal services of uh, 47.5 uh, million which is a decrease of uh, 682,000 from last year a movie of uh, 172.4 million uh, which is an increase of 3.3 .3 million from last year and the capital outlay of uh, 2.684 million for a total of 222 million six hundred thirty two thousand pesos the OVP f uh, fiscal year 2015 budget proposal of two hundred twenty two million six hundred thirty two is uh, two point forty six higher than the current uh, fiscal year 2014 budget of two hundred seventeen million two hundred ninety six thousand due to due to the proposed increase increases for maintenance and other operating expenses and capital outlay as a result of uh, personal movements, the proposal for personal services actually decreased by uh, 682,000. And um, the MOE includes the provision for all ongoing programs adjusted for applicable inflation. <coughs> um, our proposal for capital outlay amounting to 2.6 million pertains to the acquisition of two units of uh, motorcycles to replace the dilapidated units um, currently being used. Yes, sir. Mr. Martinez, anong page ka? Uh, sir, page 4 po. One. Sir, nasa ano po yan? <coughs> exactly. Of the hard copy? Of the hard copy po. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yung last page po, Mr. Chairman. That's that's it basically, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, basically an increase of uh, roughly... Uh, Iba yung copy namin, sorry. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You have a hard copy. We have this copy. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, we'll, we'll give you another copy. <coughs> so, basically, sir, we're only requesting for an increase of 2.46% uh, uh, from the previous year. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Ay mo habaan. Sir, sa liit po ng budget namin, I, I try to prolong it, but... Uh, <coughs> How much was the proposed budget of the Office of the Vice President presented before the DBM? Uh, sir, that's 222. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. 232. Proposed. Yung proposed sa DBM. Ano yung sa DBM? Sir, we proposed 231,651,000. Which was slashed to 221 million. And the difference is for what? The more or less 5 million difference is for what? Supposedly? Kung baga ano yun na walang program, activity, or project, or um, yes, pagagastos ang sana nyo? Ano ba yung Mithi? Mithi is yung computerization. Ah, sir. Sir, na-decrease po dun sa Mithi project, which was the computerization, dun po tinanggal lang DBM, kaya ho lumit yung aming... Uh, Napapunta. DBM actually is implementing it already. That's right. Initially, we proposed it to be inside our budget, but uh, they removed it, sir. So where is it now? It's in the DBM. DBM will implement that, that uh, program, sir. What's that program, sir? Sir, the BT, the... Uh, what's the exact term? That's the computerization program, sir. Of the OVP? Sir, of the whole... Uh, ang alam namin, sir, that's the whole uh, program of uh, the bureaucracy. It's not just the DBM. That's a DBM computerization program. Um, you have in your report the accomplishment report of the OVP as of the first half of 2014? Yes, sir. This page? Yes, sir. You're talking medical assistance to 2,806 beneficiaries, burial assistance to 341, transportation assistance to 27, 
Medical Dental Mission to 33,157. Relief Mission, 18,926. I'm referring to beneficiaries. That's right, sir. OFWs, 5,061. Scholarships, 1,538. Medals, 8,000. Wheelchairs, 40. Medical Equipment, 49. Legal Assistance, 770. This is chargeable against what particular item in your budget, sir? So, under the subsidies, uh, under the MOVI subsidies, subsidies others. So, ang inalis lang natin nung nakaraang budget, yung, yung tinuturing na PDAF na 200 million. You're correct, Mr. Chairman. Which refers to hard projects? Um, uh, both uh, hard and soft? Both, both hard and soft. 100 million hard, 100 million soft. And the total allocation for this particular expense for 2015 is how much, sir? 86 million, sir. The core report has three findings in so far as the OVP is concerned for 2012. These are minor findings, actually, simply to submit a report and to suggest that you facilitate actually the disbursement of certain monies for medical assistance. Have you complied with the 2012 core findings? Uh, hold on. Uh, the 2013 audit report has not been uh, transmitted. I know we don't have a copy. I'm referring That's to the right. 2012. That's right. Um, has the OVP been compliant with the 2012 recommendations? That's in 2012. First, on the delay of grant of medical assistance, actually they simply want to facilitate your processes in granting That's medical right. assistance. Yes, sir. The submission of a physical count of property, plant and equipment? Yes, sir. Complied? Yes, sir. It has been complied, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Asikli Chako. Um, for the record, you are nodding your head, so the answer is yes. <laughs> and um, the back um, bidding for the procurement of uh, motor vehicles, in so far as the submission of the, the required publication is concerned, has this been complied with? It has been complied, Mr. Chairman. Kindly submit to us your 2013 core report as soon as the same is made available before we send this to plenary. Yes, we will do, Mr. Chairman. May katanungan ka pa? Wala na po, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> there being no further questions and sub subject to the submission of um, compliance reports in so far as the 2013 core report is concerned. The budget, the proposed budget for the Office of the Vice President for fiscal year 2015 is hereby submitted to plenary for its um, um, deliberation and approval. So ordered. Thank you. And Thank good you. Afternoon. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Hearing is suspended. May we request Philcom officials to kindly situate themselves in the panel? The hearing of the Committee on Finance is hereby resumed. Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of the Philrecom family headed by its chair, Chairperson Ang Angel Angel, sir. Uh, Angel, Your Honor. Angel Castaño, Jr. You are recognized, sir, and you may proceed with your presentation. Good afternoon. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Uh, we submitted already the highlights of our proposed uh, budget last week but uh, 
If uh, with your kind of indulgence, uh, we would like to present a synopsis of uh, our mandate Please in, accord in accordance with uh, uh, 420 presidential decree and Please how proceed. we implemented it and the result thereof. Um, Commissioner and Executive Director Cantos uh, will present it, Your Honor. You are recognized, sir. Commissioner Cantos, you may proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, Senator Escudero, and uh, good afternoon to the uh, uh, colleague in government and uh, the public. We are here now. Allow me to uh, walk you through, uh, Mr. Chair, on the mandate and the rest of the presentation in a snapshot of the Philippine Racing Commission. The legal basis of the existence of uh, PIRACOM is the PD 420, March 1974. Our uh, main mandate is about uh, uh, promotion and direct uh, acceleration of development and continued growth of horse racing in the country, uh, focus on uh, job generation and a source of revenue for the government. Likewise, our uh, aims and objective uh, is to promote and maintain the efficient and biased operation of horse racing. But of course, we would like to emphasize that the betting aspect goes to our colleague in the Games and Amusements Board. Likewise, uh, Mr. Chair, we would like to uh, focus on the improvement of the bloodlines of our Philippine horses in our country at par with the international arena. So again, uh, our focus basically is uh, on the government the generation, revenue generation, uh, employment, and continuous bloodline improvement. Okay, let, let me now uh, walk you through the sales and revenue aspect that uh, was uh, generated by the Commission since its birth in 1974. Uh, as you would notice, the, uh, the bar chart um, show that uh, we have a, a, a continuous increase from its birth in 1974 to last year. Uh, basically, the spikes of the mid-year was because of the uh, putting up of uh, off-track betting stations uh, in the, in the me metropolis. Uh, just to uh, give you an idea, off-track betting stations takes, uh, takes the betting of uh, race activities in uh, in track, uh, now situated in two in Cavite and one in Malabar, Batangas. Uh, the generation of sales basically is about 94% uh, emanating from these OTB or off-track betting stations. Sir, Mr. Chair, you said continuous increase. It has been on the decline since 2012. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, with your indulgence, uh, it is basically because of the proliferation of uh, the competition, just like the internet gaming, where well, Lotto is one among them, and um, some betting um, aspects that is basically web-based. Second, when you speak of sales, sales from what, sir? Bets? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, it's all about the growth in the sales operation. Again, that is basically because of the off-track betting station uh, increase during the early 2000s. So you want betting to increase? Well, uh, Pag marami ho yung pumupusta at mas malaki yung pusta, you are successful. Yes, Mr. Correct? Chair. That's right. Ayan, that, yes, sir. Mali. Uh, well, basically... The Basically, your agency should encourage, and if the bets increase, you're successful. If they decline, you're not successful. So, kung magsugal lalo ang Pilipino, matagumpay ang ahensya nyo. Pag binawasan ng Pilipino ang sugal, hindi kayo matagumpay? Well, Mr. Chair, with due respect, uh, that is our basis of uh, the growth of the industry. But uh, likewise, we would like also to focus on the job generation aspect and the no, bloodline. No, I'm not objecting. Um, I'm just... Stating the obvious. Essentially, yes, right? Uh, right, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Please proceed, sir. Okay. Thank you. Now, the government general revenue for the past 10 years is around 1.34 billion pesos uh, in terms of uh, the different level of tax takes. Um, this is uh, in the past 10 years. As uh, shown now on the, on the projector, uh, there are two uh, bars uh, colored blue and red. Red represents 2014. Now, uh, it, it shows that, uh, again, the performance this year is uh, an improvement of last year, wherein uh, last year 
there, there, is already an, there was already an increase of around 3% compared to year 2012. Now, uh, let me just emphasize on the growth this year. Uh, right now, as we speak, or last week, there was an increase already of around 9.18% or a face value of around 449 million pesos compared apple to apple of the time span last year. Basically, this is because of uh, the excitement of uh, the races being offered now to the betting public or what we call the Bayang Carrerista. Likewise, we were able to, uh, because of the budget that was uh, provided to us last year, uh, Honorable Chair, we were able to uh, break another traditional lean month spell or uh, around, uh, this is about the traditional low performance months from March to June. As indicated in the figure from 2008 to 2013, the average sales during those months from March to June is around 641 million pesos. But this year, uh, it was uh, increased, there was an increase of around 45 million or uh, gross sales of 686 million. Please move on. Likewise, uh, the, the stakeholders now are uh, experiencing an increase of around 10% or face value increase of 11,500 for every first place win or around 135,000 pesos as their first money or take home. Moreover, the prices for Pilwacom uh, sponsored stakes races and charity races are released on time. This is important because this is the, the manner of how we promote internally the races by uh, making use of their generated revenue and applying, applying it back to the system. And uh, again, uh, the, the, it was uh, used for their own uh, uh, operational uses and improvement of their bloodlines. Now the second focus that we are uh, uh, um, targeting or uh, concentrating on is, of course, after the uh, revenue generation, is the job generation. There are around 5,000 workers in this very specialized and sophisticated field of horse racing. Uh, just like the jockeys, the horse trainers, horse breeders, horse ownership, and other allied sectors. OTB, again, stands for Off-Track Betting Station. The, uh, of course, they are they're employed they are employing uh, tellers, some other uh, allied workforces, to have it operated, and basically now it's uh, on a daily basis. The breakdown of which is uh, the, the direct and indirect employ employment that uh, we are giving to, to uh, individuals that are into the industry. Direct employment goes to our licenses just like owners, trainers, jockeys, grooms, which are the, uh, basically the uh, the real uh, guys that are tending to the horses day in and day out. Likewise, jockeys, helpers, and the rest of the licenses as racing officials. And the indirect employment goes to the off-track betting stations and other allied industries on feeds and veterinary services. We would like to uh, convey to this honorable committee that uh, there are new horse owners since September 2011 of around 115, student jockeys of around 36, apprentice jockeys of around 28, and trainers, which is actually a very hard um, uh, field of um, specialization. These are horse trainers uh, of around eight. Uh, when we say new licenses, th these are a new blood or new family the members that are coming into the industry. Now, on the third leg of our uh, mandate, uh, the focus of our mandate, it is all about the bloodline improvement or the breeding so that we will be at par with the horse racing nations of the world. We are continuously providing breeder's price per year of around 3.8 million for the past five years. Uh, this is intended for our locally bred horses 
uh, price money. I would like to uh, uh, break it down to uh, the regular races that happens uh, every day, which is around 2.6 million going back into the system, just like the horse breeders. And likewise, the calendar stakes races of around 1.15 million uh, from the budget of the commission. When we say calendar stakes races, Mr. Chair, it's all about our promotional activities like the triple leg crown, the, the juvenile or the young horses that is basically a mirror copy to the to the uh, U United States of America and of course to highlight this one is the presidential gold cup we are we are riding on to this activity of the Philippine charity sweepstakes office so ilang karera meron tayo sa isang taon yes around 100 uh, uh, i would like to refer that to my uh, to our chair mr uh, chair castano sir about uh, including uh, Monday, which uh, we recently uh, We should include Monday, yes. yes. How many? About 300. 300 days in a year? In a year, yes. How many races per day? Uh, eight races uh, during uh, regular days and uh, week uh, days races uh, 10 races, uh, 10 and 12, so 22 every weekend uh, races. 22 a weekend? Saturday so and Sunday, yes. Saturdays and Sundays? Yes. Yung 65 days po na pahinga na walang karera, anong mga araw po yun? Pasko, New Year, gano'n po yun? Yes, uh, uh, ano po, yung uh, during uh, Holy Friday, Good Friday, Thursday, um, Holy, Holy, Week. Holy Thursday, Holy Week, yes. Roughly 65 days in a year nga walang karera? Wala po. Magkano ang total bets in a year? Uh, the average uh, during weekdays is uh, 24 million. 24 a million a day? A day, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, during uh, weekend, Saturday is around 26. And uh, Sunday, around the uh, minimum of 30. It depends. If we have uh, stake races, around uh, 34 million, up to 36 million. Total for the year would be... In other words, I just want to know, magkano po ginagastos ng mana na yung Pilipino sa horse races? 7.3 uh, or 4 billion. A year? A year, yes. And the tax take of government would be in the form of what? Uh, 17, uh, about 17 million. 17%. 170 million. Magkano pong total bets? Sir, how much? 7.3, Your Honor. 17% ang tax take ng uh -huh. gobyerno. Yes. Ano pong klaseng tax yun? Uh, Documentary, uh, Your Honor, and a tax on winnings. So that's 17% of 7.3? Yes. Uh, 17 to 18. 18%. Yeah. Okay. Please proceed, sir. Just summarize it, sir. Yeah, we are about to uh, get through with, with this one, um, uh, Mr. Chair. So, in effect, we were able to produce uh, local horses that uh, were able to beat the superstar uh, imported horses, the likes of Magna Carta in 2012, Hagdang Bato of uh, 2014, and Penrith of 2014. Okay, John, thank you. Of course, we're not forgetting our obligation to, to uh, support uh, national scope or national scale uh, calamities. Just like Bagyong Yolanda, when it uh, happened, we were able to uh, uh, conduct three charity races for the benefit of the victims of uh, Typhoon Yolanda, as well as uh, that of uh, Typhoon uh, Glenda, which happened recently. And uh, we were coursing it through the able participation of uh, the Philippine Red Cross intended for the victims of these uh, calamities. We also would like to emphasize that uh, on the budget you uh, provided the Commission, uh, Honorable Chair, we are able to conduct several uh, international compliances, particular to gender and development, just like uh, uh, what we are doing the Senior Citizens League of the Philippines, Philippine Horse Trainers Association, New Jockeys uh, uh, Association, wherein we are doing this regularly since we assumed office in 2011. Well, these are uh, basically intended for the, the uh, disabled, the senior citizen, 
uh, and uh, uh, retired uh, particular to uh, uh, the women in the industry. Of course, we, we don't forget our obligation on the administrative side and compliances with the commendations uh, on this part of our presentation. Uh, on the administrative compliances of the Office of the Philippine Racing Commission, we were able to uh, ad adopt and, uh, on the, and complied with the AO31 issued last uh, year, uh, implemented last year. It, 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 the intention of the AO31 is to rationalize the rates of the, the fees and charges of government agencies of their existing rates. Uh, this, this was able to be implemented smoothly, and uh, it seemed like uh, it was accepted uh, and uh, doesn't uh, uh, affect or uh, have been a burden to the stakeholders in the industry. Likewise, uh, we were able to comply with the uh, RA3870, which requires a uh, 1% additional uh, fee for the legal research fund of the University of Philippines uh, cent Law Center and its law com complex. It's being implemented now, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, and uh, it's being remitted uh, continuously with the Bureau of Treasury. On our, uh, some of our, we are um, uh, elated with the, some of the commendations by uh, our co colleague in government. Uh, just like what uh, BIR provided us uh, uh, early this year, uh, first quarter of this year, basically uh, telling us that uh, we, we don't only pay, pay taxes in the correct amount, but also being one of the taxpayers for the past years. Likewise, we would like also to uh, relay to the committee that we were able to uh, attain a CSC level two uh, from a uh, civil service commission just recently, wherein this program is to institutionalize meritocracy and excellence in human relations management of what or what the, they call the prime HRM. And uh, moreover, this is uh, one of the uh, qualification attained by the Philippine Racing Commission uh, issued by the Department of Budget and Management uh, of second half of this year, which states that Piracom has satisfied all criteria for the top-up bonus and uh, enjoyed by the employees for their additional bonus uh, this year. Mr. Chair, uh, we are uh, done with our presentation, and I'll get back to our chairman. Um, thank you, sir. Um, just a few questions. Um, ilang race tracks po meron tayo? Tatlo po, uh, Mr. Chairman. All of the races in these race tracks are being supervised by Philcom. Yes, yes. Uh, we supervise and control the conduct of racing. So hindi po sila pwede magbakarera ng wala kay don. Apo. What hindi po. Uh, kung wala kami, hindi po sila pwede magbakarera kung wala kami ini-issue permit. Hmm. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng breakages? Uh, yan po yung mga sobra sa butal na iniipon. Palagay nyo, ang taman dividend is uh, 105. Uh, yung 5 ho, tina, tinatabi yun ng club. Yung mga butal po. Laging round figure ang dividend. Eh. Sorry po, hindi ako tumatay. Uh -huh. hmm, paano po yan? What do you mean by dividend? Uh, palagay nyo po, ang bigay, kung tumaya kayo When ng... When bigay, yung panalo. Uh, yung panalo. Ang ano ho, ang dividendo naging uno uh, naging 12.80 sa tayong dalawang piso. Yung 12 lang po ang bibigay, yung 80 po, yun ang tinatawag na breakage. Yung centavos inyo. Yung centavos. Yung buong Hindi, piso. Ho, sa club. Sa, sa club ho 'yun. 50% binibigay sa Piracom. Mm. Yung butal na centavos, yung butal na piso-piso sa kanila pa rin po 'yan. Apo, yung butal ho. Pero meron si Ero ang Piracom na 50%. Tama ho ba? Kung ilan man yung tumama, paghahati-hatihan nila yung premyo. Aha. Ganun po yun, di ba? Aha. Ang mananalo po ba sa isang karera, isang numero lang? Hindi ho. Conforme ho sa mga taya eh. Meron so pwede kang iba... tumayang panlima to? Panalo ka pa rin? Hindi ho. Pang-apat. Hanggang pang-apat. Hanggang pang-apat lang. Aha. So taya ako pang-apat to. Kahit talo siya kumbaga, hindi siya nanalo. Pang-apat nga siya. Panalo ko. Hindi naman ho. Uh, ano yon? Kung ang tataya nyo, magmula, prime, magmula first place, second place, third place, fourth place, yun hong klaseng ganong betting, mananalo kayo. Pero laging yung first place lang ho ang may dividend, ang panalo. Ah, may panalo. Uh -huh. Yung second, third, fourth, 
Wala ho, wala ho. But for, but for, for, but for purposes of prices, they are entitled to prices. Horse price. Tigilan na ho natin yan, baka matutup ako. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we have it, the cover. Hanggang tongit lang ho ako. Hindi ako umabot dyan. Um, co-observations. Um, as of December 2013, may we know the status of the pending case for declaratory relief involving the amount of 17.4 million? Is it, it is, still pending? Uh, is it resolved? It, it's still pending. Uh, in fact, there was no hearing uh, called yet by uh, deep, uh, city of uh, Bacoor or municipality of Bacoor. The uh, court there. Uh, our case is now being handled by the Office of the Solicitor General. Number two, the uh, interest that um, COA recommended that you charge because of the delayed remittance in the amount of 189,000. What's the status of that, sir? No, uh, as you know, uh, by way of b uh, background, uh, Mr. Chair, the. The we cannot uh, we believe that we cannot uh, impose the six percent interest for the delay because uh, those delay were done during the past administration wherein they acted leniency in favor of the club because that time uh, they were the book the two clubs were just started their business. But the recommendation was for you to issue a policy imposing this. In the future, prospectively, has such a policy been issued, sir? No, but we already wrote them, uh, Mr. Chair. But in the future, is that already clear insofar as these clubs are concerned for delayed remittances? Uh, that the 6% interest will be charged as against them under the As to so the interest, no, but as to their uh, late remittances, it's up to date now because uh, we made their resolution, a very effective resolution, that every time they will apply for a permit, uh, we ask for payment first, or else, no, no check, no permit. But what about the interest in case of delay? As of now, there's no delay, except for those cases. Assuming there is delay, sir. What about my delay? Uh, now we will impose it. Yeah, prospectively. I yes. think that's what Ko was asking for, uh -huh. that you pass a resolution saying that in case of delayed remittances, that you charge them 6%. Yes, yes, we'll, we will do that, Mr. Chair. Can you do so, sir? One more last point. Para saan po yung capital outlay nyo na 1.1 million? Uh, para ho sa motor vehicle na 1959 pa ho, it's, it's no longer viable because of the maintenance. Anong klaseng kotse ho yan? Ako nalang bibili akong luma. <laughs> Ay, uh, Vintage uh, na ho yan kung 1959 eh. Effects. <laughs> Effects so. Wala akong effects na 1959 kayo naman. Hindi pa inyemento ang effects. Uh, 1995. Nung... 1995. 1995. Thank you, sir, um, for your inputs. Subject to the compliance, to the COA recommendation, and so far as the resolution on the 6% interest on delayed remittances, the proposed budget of Philrecom for fiscal year 2015 is hereby approved by committee and favorably recommended to plenary for its deliberation and final approval. So ordered. Thank you, sir, Thank for you, joining Mr. us Chairman. this afternoon. Congratulations. Thank you. Well appreciated, Mr. Chairman. May we call on the um, Games and Amusements Board to kindly situate themselves in the panel. In the meantime, hearing is suspended.
Hearing is resumed. Um, Chair would now proceed with the budget of the Games and Amusements Board, or GAB. I would like to acknowledge the presence of its chair, um, Mr. Guanzon, as well as um, Commissioner Gaston and the entire GAB family. If you have a presentation, sir, you may proceed. At magandang hapon po sa inyo. Uh, magandang hapon po, uh, Honorable Chairman uh, Cheese. Uh, together with us also here is our legal, no, Chief Legal. Si Attorney Omar. And um, wala ho kaming, ang presentation po namin dito na lang kasi it's very, we don't have a slide presentation anymore, Mr. Chair, no? But if you just allow us, just just go through the... If none, may we ask, may we just interpose questions instead, also to abbreviate the proceedings. Um, Sir, can you distinguish GAB from Philrocom? Sabi nila kayo daw yung bahala sa taya, sila yung bahala sa laro. What do you mean by that? What do they mean um, by that, rather? Yung, yung betting portion ho kami ang namamahala, no, no. Para if there is a check and balance, uh, Mr. Chair. So the operations of the racing itself is handled by the Philracom, no? How, how the race is being conducted. Pero the, the betting aspect of that and all the OTBs are under the supervision of GABHO. So to horse sure. racing lang GAB? Uh, no, not only horse racing, all professional sports. So if you may allow me... Uh, ah, so, so horse racing mo tayo. Tama ho yung okay. figure nilang 7.3 billion total bets in a year? Um, I think that would be, may I just please refer sir. to Anna, please. Yung figure na binigyan nila. It's the same, no? Yes, yes, same. Your Honor. Yeah. So I lahat po ng sports favorite. betting is under GAP? Sports, uh, tama ko ba? Yes, sports, yes. Oh. So labas sa inyo yung PCSO, labas sa inyo yung casino? Labas, labas, hindi ho sa amin yun. In fact, meron ho mga, yung mga e-games na ngayon. Labas sa inyo yung Labas ho sa amin yun. Oh. Ang sa inyo lang sports betting yeah well the sports uh, that that will legal involve. sports betting legal yeah legal yes it's the enumeration right. would be what horse racing uh, basketball professional all professional uh, sports uh, that would uh, have uh, um, rewards no and and salaries and and, and benefits so. all sports na, may, na professional yes so. um, and, and all bettings uh, for those the, the betting so menon lang dyan would be but uh, that under us would be the uh, the horse racing, oh, or the betting aspect of the horse racing. So, what is betting aspect in bang sports? I was about to ask you uh, that. No, no, wala. That's so, not under us, betting. It's not under you, but it's also not legal, right? Legal po bang mag, magpusta sa PBA? I, no, that, not that we know of. No, sports no, betting is not. not legal, right? Is it? No, no, it's not legal. Hmm. Hindi ba? Although there are a lot. Dami pustano sa PBA dito eh. Yeah, that's right. Plus oh, one, well, minus one. Yeah, mga ganun ho na hindi. I guess, uh, if you would liken that to the uh, Las Vegas doon, official, and that's legal doon. Pero dito wala ho tayong ganun eh. Wala ho tayong ganun, meaning it's not legal here not, not or legal. it's not regulated here? Well, we still don't have that kind of uh, the the kind of betting. Does it need to be allowed? Uh, give an example, sir. Pustahan tayo. Gilas, laban. Sino ba yung huling kalaban nila? Argentina. Oo. Tayong dalawa, nagpustahan. Is that illegal? From the point of view of God. From the legal, may may yamay. <laughs> Just I give that on the legal. Ano? Opinion. <laughs> well, Your Honor, technically, that's illegal because uh, it is not uh, regulated nor licensed by the government. Uh, the only sports betting that uh, maybe we are not... Uh, uh, it, it's not within our jurisdiction, but there appears to be some sports betting under the um, PAGCOR, Your Honor, or e-games. So they only use the results of the games as the ads, but uh, they do not have anything to do with the regulation of the sports, which is the jurisdiction of GAB, Your Honor. Just now, when you, when you regulate the betting aspect, it's only the horse races. The rest lahat ng sports na binabayaran yung player, you regulate that? Yes, that's right. Oh. Binabayaran meaning may salary sila. May salary yes, yes. yes oh. Kasama yung mga... Licenses U nila. No? Kasama po ba yung UAAP at saka no, NCAA? No, it's not because that's, that's all under the NSA. Ho. Na, amateur ho yun. Binabayaran din sila eh. <laughs> Again, uh, no, they receive compensation and that's not a secret. Uh, well, it's distinguished between Allowances and there are those that are paid professionally as profession. So, would I think there would be a distinction on that one? Because you know, allowances. Amateur, 
and professional. Between amateur and professionals, yes. But sir, before, you distinguish amateur from professional in that amateurs were not paid. And professionals were paid. Kaya nga professional lang tao, di ba? Binabayaran na sila sa ginagawa nila eh. But right now, these players are being given compensation. Whether you call it allowance, salary, they're still being given something in exchange for playing for a particular school. In fact, it has become so cutthroat that the offers have been exorbitant at times. If only to get that player to play in a particular school. And we know that up to schools that are competing. Um, yeah. Please, sir, enlighten uh, us. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, traditionally, it, the dichotomy between professional and amateur has always been that uh, there's compensation, salary, whatever form. Yeah. However, through the years, Your Honor, because of the popularity of the amateur, Precisely. UAAP and uh, all the others, nagkaroon na sila ng, uh, hindi naman sikreto, like you said, na allowances recruitment and packages. recruitment packages. So, we feel, Your Honor, that's one of the areas that need to be addressed. Because there's also a school of thought, uh, even in the uh, professional uh, uh, <coughs> sports, Your Honor, that as long as it is honored by the NSA, Mm. You may consider it amateur. But is this under the NSA? No, Your Honor. But the the other sports in the amateur uh, in amateur sports, Your Honor. NCAA UAP. Yeah, uh, either either the NSA yeah. or the Olympic Committee or the colleges and universities, because uh, the students go to school not really to to play as professional sports, Your Honor. It's, it's really to study, and it so happened. Are you sure? Athletes. <laughs> well, Your Honor, that's that's at least the, in, in theory. So we have yet to, uh, I think we have to adjust. We have to revisit the definition of professional and amateur. In the I'm not saying that you should, sir. Absolutely, Attorney Benitez. I'm not saying that you should. Only that the line has been blurred. Yeah, it's no longer black and white. It's blurred. It's gray. And I think we have to clarify that. And by policy, perhaps without need of a law, by policy, perhaps you can address that issue. Kasama nga ba hindi? Or to what extent, kasama? To what extent, um, hindi? I'm not saying what they're doing is illegal either. Only that, if it's being done, and if we're regulating professionals, there might yeah. be a need to, at the very least, for you to look into it, not necessarily regulate it, but to simply look into it with a view to um, providing policy guidance to them or to the colleges in this regard. Yes, sir. Um, on professional players, what essentially do you do, sir? May licensia ba yung mga Yes, yes. They have all of them? licenses. All, all professional athletes. Yeah, they come to us before at the start of the year to get their licenses. So particularly track, like them. basketball, uh, no, basketball, uh, golf. Uh, those are the ones that are professional. Billiards, <laughs> boxing. Basically, those are the sports that would uh, come. Without a license, they cannot play. Yes, they cannot. No, without. Can a, a foreigner apply for a license here? I'm sorry. Can a yeah. foreigner apply for a license here? Um, a foreigner? Y yes. Uh -oh. No yeah. limitation? No, no limitations. Because um, if it were like for billiard, for instance, then they come, their license is temporary only to play for that particular. But if we're talking of like the uh, professional basketball players, then it's it's just like the regular uh, players here as well. They, they, they get the license. They get license for the entire uh, season. For the entire season? Yes. See, uh, si Blatch. My license? Amateur siya, Mr. Chair. Ah, so wala? Wala. Not, not with us. But again, I'm sure, alam ka naman hindi siya right. pinabayaran, ikaw naman, no? <laughs> in fact, alam ka yes. naman ginagawa niya sa kusang loob lang niya, hindi naman siguro, di ba? I mean, I'm sure he's paid. That's an interesting uh, statement, yes. I think I'm not saying it's wrong or it's yes. bad, ah. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is... Um, True, yes. Again, the definition of amateur and professional has been blurred in the past years, not even decade, only in the past years. Sir, we are in receipt of your call recommendation for 2013. Mm. Call findings and recommendations. May we inquire about the compliance on the two findings? Dalawa lang naman po eh. Ano yung findings? Yeah. Yeah. On the reliability of the account receivables, amounting to 208,000. Malit lang naman po. But still, every peso counts. And... Um, The adjustments of your entry in so far as your properties, obsolete properties or unserviceable properties amounting to 4.3. Yes, may I refer you, Mr. Chairman, to our uh, admin? Please, ma'am. Ms. Artig, Artuge? Yeah, we have. Uh, uh, good, good afternoon, uh, 
<laughs> Senator. With regard to the, you know, to the 208,000, uh, 44,700 uh, was already a write-off. So this year we're going to have it right off in yung balance po. And then as to the unserviceable unreliable uh, unserviceable asset which is proper, not properly classified as of June of this year uh, the chief accountant already reclassified the said yeah. account. So have you been given a clearance yes. for having complied? Uh, <laughs> not yet. Not yet, sir. But you have complied? Yes, sir. May we know the one point... Pareho kayo ng pillar ko, 1.1? Yes, sir. Yes. Ang capital outlay nyo? Opo. Kutsi din? Uh, ban. Sasakyan din? Opo. Sasakyan din. <laughs> Sasakyan din. Ban po. Which will make the total service vehicles of um, GAB... How many? Uh... Seven, seven, sir, including the the new one. Kung matutuloy po. One point one. Ano mo bibiling one point one van? Nakita ko po urban. <laughs> Ay Nissan. Yes. Tas, tas ang piyesa nun. Anything else you would like to add? Thank you, sir. Just kindly look into those matters that um, was raised earlier and kindly submit to us before we go to plenary the final compliance certificate or report of COA insofar as the 2013 findings and recommendations are um, concerned. Yes, sir. There will be no other points. Chair hereby acts on the proposed budget of the GAB for 2015 and favorably recommends it to plenary for deliberation and final approval. Congratulations, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank Sanina. you, Mr. Chairman. And magandang hapon. Okay na. Hearing is suspended. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon.